republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First, I must start with a required reading. Are you with me? Any citizen desiring to address the hospital board should turn in a speaker card to the board secretary. If the citizen comment, if the citizen comment pertains to the item on the agenda today, the comment will be heard early in this meeting. Otherwise, it will be heard toward the end. Speakers are asked to limit their comments to five minutes. Vendors, suppliers, and other persons seeking hospital contracts awarded on a competitive basis are reminded that their ability to address the board may be restricted by the terms of the invitation to bid, request for proposal, or other purchasing criteria. Lastly, the board has established a claims adjustment review panel comprised of representatives of the board, the medical staff, and administration, legal counsel, to review and negotiate the settlement of claims. Accordingly, the board will not entertain comments on or discuss or negotiate claims at this meeting. Uh, first order of business is to seek approval of the order of the motion, please. All in favor? Yes. Opposed? Carries. The next item is seek approval of the minutes of the May 17th of this year. Seek approval. Second. All in favor? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, board reports. There are no board reports. Report of the medical staff, Dr. Lawson. Tram Hudson. Chief of staff, please. Have joined the meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'd like to uh, request the Thank 
you, sir. A treasurer's report, Joseph D. Virginia, treasurer, please. I just have uh, one item today, and it's approval of the bad debt and charity care. I move approval of the bad debt and charity care for the month ending May 31st, 2021, in the amount of $18,627,000. Can I please have a second? All those in favor respond by saying yes. Carries. Thank you, Joe. Financial highlights. Bill Bolgen, our Chief Financial Officer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have the financial highlights for May. Um, and we'll start with system total revenue. And this is a rating agency format. For the month of May, total revenue of 103,163,000 compared to a budget of 92,575,000. This will year to date, which represents eight months of activity, total revenue of 782,616,000 compared to a budget of 745,045,000. Total expenses for the system in the ratings format for the month of May, 92,129,000 compared to a budget of 87,784,000. This will year to date, Total expenses of 708,437,000 compared to a budget of 702,545,000. Operating income for the system in the rating agency format for May 17,634,000 compared to a budget of 4,791,000. We had an operating margin of 16.1% compared to a budget of an operating margin of 5.2% for May. This year to date, and again, this is through eight months, operating income of 74,225,000, which is an operating margin of 9.5%, compared to a budget of 42,500,000, operating margin of 5.7%. Moving to hospital statistics, and these are all May fiscal year to date numbers. The average daily occupancy, 652 patients, compared to a budget of 609 patients. The acute average length of stay, 4.68 days. Last year was 4.43 days. Admissions through eight months, 29,875, compared to a budget of 30,000. Five. Continuing with statistics on surgery cases, we had 16,209 compared to a budget of 16,976, and births 2,537 compared to a budget of 2,613. Outpatient registrations. In three months, 331,144, compared to a budget of 334,791. And registrations in our two emergency care centers totaled 76,018, compared to a budget of 85,367. Looking at case mix index, three months, the case mix index, case mix index all patients was 1.89, and for Medicare patients, 2.03. That concludes my presentation. Thank you, Bill. Committee reports, governance effectiveness committee, Joe DiVirgilio, please, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Uh, the governance effectiveness committee meet, met this morning, and the minutes of the meeting of March 10, 2021 were approved. The committee approved the revisions to the board policy, 710.2. BD.10, community representatives, to reflect the term limits previously approved at the board meeting of March 15, 2021, limiting community representatives to two two-year terms. Based on that, uh, on the board's prior actions and discussion this morning, I move approval of the board policy 710.BD.10, community representatives, as amended and recommended by the Governance Effectiveness Committee. And I ask for a second. second. All those in favor respond by saying yes. yes. 
Opposed? The motion carries. Thank you, John. All right. Continuing, uh, the committee members then received and discussed the results of the board's annual self-assessment conducted earlier this year using a survey tool provided by the Governance Institute. The committee uh, was then presented with the 2021 SMH Sarasota uh, Utilization Review Plan previously approved as part of the Quality Improvement Plan. The committee then discussed the timeline of its activities in the coming months, including uh, for the CEO performance review and compensation discussion. Next, at Mr. Henry's request, the committee discussed the board's voting procedures. And then finally, the corporate compliance uh, officer, Lisa, Lisa Lisa Tatev presented an overview of the compliance program activities to date in 2021. This concludes my report. Thank you, Joe. Mission and Planning Committee, Sharon, please. Thank you, Jim. The Mission and Planning Committee met today where Sue Olson, Director of Critical Care Trauma Services, hemodialysis and apheresis presented on the newly insourced apheresis services at SMH. Sue gave Carol, an overview Henry. of what apheresis entails and the I'll benefit the of meeting. offering it to our patients within the system. For the next presentation, Vice President of Post-Acute Care and Rehabilitation Services, Maria DiCaro, presented on the services offered within the post-acute care division. Marie defined post-acute care services and trends within the industry and discussed the various levels of post-acute care and rehabilitation services. She then talked about the system's future inpatient rehabilitation facility bed expansion and evaluation of a long-term acute care hospital to augment the existing post-acute care continuum. The final presentation to the committee was the ranking recommendations for schematic design for the Brian D. Jellison Cancer Institute, Outpatient Cancer Pavilion, and Cancer Center at Venice. Lori Lang, president of SMH Sarasota, presented the top three architectural and contractor firms. Based on that presentation, I move approval of the ranking of the general contractors and design teams for the Brian D. Jellison Cancer Institute schematic design and cost model for the Cancer Pavilion Phase 3 and Cancer Center at Venice Phase 4 as follows. For general contractors, Grassfeld and Glory, Charles Perry Partners Incorporated, and Bar and Bar Incorporated. For the design team, EYP, Grisham Smith, and TSOI Cobus Design, as recommended by the Public Selection Committee and the Mission and Planning Committee. May I have a second, please? All those in favor respond by saying yes. yes. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Sharon. This concludes my report, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Up next, David Berender, our president and CEO. David? Okay, I'm, I am going to start uh, like we always do with our organizational report card um, for the um, year to date through May um, 2021. Our first area of focus is in service. Uh, we have our likelihood, um, uh, our system patient experience, which is our likelihood of recommending. We have a goal of having eight out of 10 services at or um, greater than the 75th percentile. I am happy to report that we are um, exceeding that and hitting at nine out of 10. And I'll show you the details on that here in a minute. Next area of focus being in people. Uh, we have a goal of having our new hire retention, which is our percentage of full regular full for part-time employers, employees hired in FY 2021 that are still employed as of September 30th, 2021. Uh, we have a goal of having 83% or higher in that, and I'm happy to report that we are exceeding that as well at 89.9%. Uh, 
and our quality focus, we, our, we, we look at our infection prevention, which is our combined overall standardized infection rate. We have a goal of being less than 0.88. Uh, happy to report we are exceeding that at 0.75. Um, just to remind the board and the public that the, a, a goal of 1.0 would be the national average for the expected rates, so or our goal already set a good bit lower than the national average for expected. In the finance um, area of focus, our, our goal is our operating margin, uh, which is at 5.5%. As you heard our CFO Bill Wogan report on it earlier, uh, we are tracking at an 8.1% operating margin. And then finally, um, growth. We have two goals, our first being our inpatient admissions and outpatient, um, out, outpatient observation patients. Our goal is being 51,161 for the year. We're coming in just short of that at 51,058 in our projection. On outpatient registrations, we have a goal of having 977,000, and we're coming in short of that on our projection as well at 960,000. Flipping the page, looking at our patient experience in more detail, our goal, as I mentioned a minute ago, is our likelihood of recommending, and you see that in the header um, on the far left. Uh, then under that, you see our 10 centers that we, we take a look at and, and, and compare and, and monitor. The next goal, the next um, column over is our actual score. Um, so starting with inpatient at 83 and going down. And then the next column, the first green column, is, our nat is the national median score. And then finally, the far right is our 75th percentile score, which is what, what we compare ourselves on for this goal. I'm happy to report all, again, nine out of the 10 um, areas of the hospital. Uh, we, have, we are hitting or exceeding the 75th percentile. Uh, the one exception being the emergency care center on the main campus. Um, we have an 81 and, and the uh, 75th is an 86. However, when we look at the 50th percentile, we are getting 10 out of 10. Next, I'd like to talk about we opened our doors to more, to more visitors as COVID cases um, declined. Sarasota Memorial recently opened its doors to additional visitors and reassumed. Uh, resume normal visiting hours thanks to a drop in hospitalizations, increasing immunity from COVID-19 vaccines, and a decline in cases around the community. Most inpatients now can have two visitors at a time between the hours of 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. For unit-specific visitation policies and other details, we invite you to go to our website. The hospital is maintaining masking requirements for all staff, providers, and visitors in public and patient-centered areas of its facilities, as well as many other pandemic protocols <laughs> to reduce and monitor transmission rates of the virus throughout the region. Vaccine education campaign is continuing. Uh, SMH continues to urge everyone to get a COVID-19 vaccine in a multi-media campaign running throughout the community, including on billboards around the um, region, which you see a picture in front of you. Getting vaccinated and continuing to wear masks is appropriate to provide the best protection, not just for ourselves, but also for our family, our families, friends, and those who are most vulnerable. Demolition paves the way for our new behavior health pavilion. Earlier this month, construction crews began to demolish the 1960s era Bayside East office building located on the south, southeast corner of Osprey and Waldemere Street. The demolition will clear the way for the construction of a new 82-bed behavioral health pavilion that will open in 2023 with a full array of inpatient and outpatient services. The existing Bayside Center for Behavioral Health Hospital on the west side of Osprey Avenue will remain open until the new pavilion is complete. Sarasota Memorial is in a preliminary planning phase and will continue working with the city and neighbors as the design phase continues. A residency program director to lead the National Medical Education Association. Congratulations to Dr. Wilhelmina Bisro Mesh, director of Sarasota Memorial Health's Internal Medicine Residency Program, who was recently named president of the Association of Hospital Medical Education. AHME is one of the top resources for medical education professionals in the U.S. and has worked in partnership with Accreditation Council for Medical Education. 
our program's main accrediting body. Dr. Visa Ramesh has worked with the prestigious organization for years and is a natural fit to lead them through the challenging COVID and post-COVID period. And we just want to just offer our own congratulations to Wilmina for that. Our construction process progress on SMH Venice. Uh, you see a couple of different pictures in there from 2019, 2020, and then from now, 2021, and the progress that's been coming on, that's been going on. SMH Venice is on schedule to be completed in the fall of 2021. The Hardin facility will open with 110 private rooms and a 28-bed um, emergency care center and eight surgical suites. The 65-acre campus will, will include medical office buildings with physician and specialty care practices, an energy center for emergency power, and seamless integration with the resources for, of the entire system. New hospital installs physician leaders for our Venice campus. So SMH Venice recently announced its inaugural team of physician leaders. The 13 physicians selected for the new hospital's med exec, our medical executive committee, represent diverse specialties in both the Sarasota and Venice communities. Their terms will continue through the new hospital's first year of operation until October 31st, 2022, followed by new physician appointments annually. And I won't go through the list you see up there, but it is led by our own uh, Dr. Chris Jefferson, who is a family practice medicine, uh, practicing with first physicians group in Venice already. Construction progress on our oncology tower. The new tower is scheduled to be completed uh, in fall 2021. Our levels one and two drywall and painting are underway. Level three, our wall protection, interior glass installation, and ceiling tile are in pro progress. Our level four OR stainless steel fortress uh, system uh, wall panel installation is in progress. On level five, the pharmacy clean room installation is underway. Level six and seven, our drywall and wall priming is in progress. Level eight, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing continue. And all furniture fixtures and equipment installation continue to the month of September. SMH Foundation drives successful tournament. A record number of golfers, 228, teed off at the 19th annual Sarasota Memorial Healthcare Foundation golf tournament this past month. The event raised $170,000. To date, the tournament has raised more than a million dollars for Sarasota Memorial Hospital Physicians Endowment which provides continued education opportunities for staff. The tournament is an annual collaboration of local businesses and individuals who support the event through sponsorships and participation in the tournament. More than 90 volunteers were also on hand to help make the event a success. So thank you, Mason, for making all that happen. 2021 hurricane season is underway. Just a friendly reminder that, that hurricane season began June 1st and now is the time to prepare. The annual to-do list will include things like making the family evacuation plans, planning for pets, protecting homes, updating contact information, making or restocking disaster supply kits. SMA will work with local and state officials to help address any challenges uh, the ongoing pandemic may present uh, for hurricane preparedness and, and response efforts. For more information, we invite you once again to, to go to our website. And that is my report. I'm happy to answer any questions, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, David. Any questions? Sure. Consent agenda, there is nothing. You seem to speak or address the board. No, sir. Doesn't matter. I have no Carol. report. I have no report. Be before we adjourn, like to add some comments. This has been a very, very, very difficult year in the medical profession with people losing their lives, suffering, being out of work. And at SNH, I've always felt, no matter what organization I was involved with, leadership starts at the top. Uh, and I would like, on behalf of the board, to say that well done, uh, and under some really trying, stressful times. 
We, we are privileged to have 7,000 plus physicians employed by uh, the Healthcare Foundation. Doctors, nurses, management team, the person who scrubs down the floors of the And we showed our finest moment. We didn't run from it. We rose to the top. We tired ourselves. We got disappointed with what was happening, but we won. And that is the sign of a great leader, a great management team, and a great group of doctors, nurses, and employees. So on behalf of everyone, well done. I'd like to say something. In fact, that, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I, I do agree it all starts at the top, but it's the people that are sitting in this room that enabled us to be able to do everything. Uh, that we've done. And uh, I can't thank you all enough because at any time that we may have felt um, overwhelmed or, and I'm talking my whole team here, and it's everybody that's in the front and, and sitting behind us and other people that aren't here. Um, but any time any one of us felt overwhelmed or, or a little defeated, um, there was one of the people on, on this board that are sitting at this table today that were there every single time to take that office up. And, 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 you don't, and I know that you, you really can't understand how much that means um, to each one of us in here. So thank you.